written, you've been in a bunch of these with the Gamecocks. What does this all mean to you, and how much does that keeping that streak going mean to you guys? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Coach Sweeney. Before we play Mary years, he says it's a season of his own, and it truly is. Um, like, you know, I haven't, I've never lost to Carolina, so that's something. You know, growing up a Clemson fan, that's something. You know, I want to keep going for. You know, even when I'm not here, as long as possible, for sure. I'm guessing that you know lots and lots of people, and even maybe some family members who are Gamecock fans as well. How do you deal with? Uh, how do you deal with the back and forth? Does it come up all the time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely grew up with you know some of my closest friends being Carolina fans, and um, you know people I went to church with, different things like that. So, um, you know, I think it's you know it's a lot of fun, uh, you know, for you know, to have some smack talk back and forth. But at the end of the day, um, you know, my main goal is to win. And however we do that, you know, I'll be fine with it. So. Jordan, what do you think of Joey's defensive line from your tape study? And do they remind you of any team that you've played defensive line wise? Um, you know, they're athletic, you know, and kind of big up front. Um, you know, Zach Pickens is a baller. Um, and Jordan Branch as well. Like, those guys are ballers. Um, and. Definitely gonna have to, you know, be prepared and ready to go for them. Um, and uh, I'm not really sure necessarily if they kind of, you know, remind me of kind of any defensive line we played. Um, but you know, they're, those guys are dangerous, you know, when they want to be. So, you know, we got to show up, you know, we're ready to go, you know, against those guys. Being a dangerous when they want to be, were you surprised at all by the uh, Tennessee result this Saturday night? Um, I want to say, I mean. As transparent as possible, I was a little bit surprised. Um, but I mean, as we know it now, that's just college football for you, you know. So, um, you know, anything can happen on any given day. Um, and that's kind of what Coach Sweeney, you know, has been preaching to us. And, you know, you see it around the country um, every year. So, you know, I, I think our main goal is not to not let that be us, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for me, you know, being here so long and growing up in South Carolina, like, I don't need that um, kind of motivation. Um, it's just, you know, it's South Carolina, and, you know, you want to play your best against them. And maybe for some of the younger guys who, you know, haven't been here long or don't really understand, you know, what this rivalry means to people, uh, they might need that reminder. But, you know, being an older guy who's from here, you know, I don't really need, you know, that extra kind of motivation, you know. Um, like I understand how, how big this game is and how much it matters to so many people. So Yeah, I mean it definitely he definitely does. Um and just um he kinda takes us back a little bit in time when, you know, Clemson was on the losing end of that of that streak, um and kinda what it felt like. Um and it's like, you know, you can play as good as you want all season, but if you lose this game, you know, doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really matter as much. Um, so, I mean, his biggest, our biggest focus, you know, is just to, you know, get this win. Obviously, it's South Carolina, um, but, you know, they're they're in our way to kind of what we want to do as a team. So, you know, that's that's enough motivation for itself. Jordan, um, DJ is your leader on offense. How has he kind of handled the ebbs and flows of playing really well, getting benched a couple times, coming back playing well? How has he kind of handled that? Yeah, I mean, I can honestly say um, he hasn't changed at all. Like, even when he's, you know, playing, you know, his best football, he's the same person. Or maybe when he's not playing as good that day and they give Cade a shot, like, he's he's that same guy. He's supportive of Cade and, you know, of the whole offense. Um, and, you know, he wants, he wants to see the offense and the team, you know, succeed whether he is in there or not, you know. And um, as a leader, you know, as a quarterback of the team, like, that's tough. Maybe to watch the offense when you're not leading the show or you're not in there, um, but you know that speaks of you know what kind of guy he is to maybe you know to understand that he's not playing necessarily his best, but to you know still be so supportive and um, lead each day like that. That tells you a lot about it, you know what kind of guy he is. Does it say something too about how he can get a lot of criticism from the outside, and yet he seems to be that same guy who just right. bounces back and, you know, and, and, and just plays well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just, like, he's one of the best teammates I've ever played with. Um, just um, year in and year out, uh, last year, this year, whatever it may be, like, 
whenever something goes wrong, he gets, you know, 90% or, you know, 100% of the criticism. And, you know, majority of the time it's really not his fault, um, if we're being honest. And you won't know that unless you're kind of in the film room, you know, studying the plays or whatever it may be. Um, but from the outside looking in, you know, it's easy to blame the quarterback. Um, so he takes a lot of, you know, of, you know, what goes wrong, he takes a lot of that. Um, but, you know, for him to still be so supportive and, you know, um, want to see us succeed and not let that get to him, um, it speaks volume. Jordan, what was your assessment, assessment of Mitchell May's performance on Saturday, especially coming to come in on such short notice with Marcus Kate going down? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like Mitchell's a guy who's been here for a while, hasn't necessarily played as much. But, you know, um, when Walker was out, Mitchell came in and played well. Um, and with Marcus getting hurt in the first quarter, Mitchell came in and played well. And that's that's what you want. Like, you know, he's been begging for a shot. He got it, you know. And to come in and play well um, and, you know, to prepare each week, not knowing if you're going to play or not, is tough. Um, and, you know, that I give kudos to Mitchell for preparing, you know, not knowing if he's going to play Saturday or not. Um, but, you know, he came in, um, did what he's supposed to do. Um, and, you know, it's exciting to kind of see the growth, you know, from Mitchell from when he first got here to now, for sure. Yeah, I mean, he, I could tell in his face he's ready to go. Um, like, he, he had prepared. Um, and so we live together, so it's kind of easy to stay on him about, you know, making sure he's watching tape or whatever. So um, he takes it serious, whether it be recovery, the film room. Like, he prepares each week, you know, as, he, as if he is a starter. Um, so I was just, knowing he was coming in, I told him, you know, he was fine. He did it the week before. You know, he's... He goes against, you know, the best guys in the country each day at practice. Um, so just to, you know, breathe and be confident is the biggest thing I was telling him out there. Did he play anywhere on the line? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I haven't seen him play center, but, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, he's played from his time here. He's played literally every position except for center, you know, since he's been here so far. So, which, you know, that takes a lot to, you know, be able to play all four positions. Um, that that is definitely not an easy thing to do. Um, that just tells you, you know. How, how hard he's worked, you know, to get better, you know, and be able to play those positions. It's sweet when a guy gets his chance because of somebody else else's out, though, right? Yeah, it definitely. You definitely hate it for Marcus, um, a guy who's been playing well this year and um, a guy who cares so much. And, you know, I, I love – like, I want to see him be successful, and I love playing beside him. Um, so I really, you know, hate, you know, that that happened to him. But I know, you know, he'll – Take his recovery series, and you know I have no doubt that he'll be better next year. You know when he when he's healthy. Jordan, that a Santa, is that a Santa Clara shirt? And how many times have you worn that? Oh, uh, this is like my everyday shirt. Like before <laughs> practice, um, I put it on, and and it's funny in the training room. Uh, somebody was like, "Dang, you've been here that long to have this hoodie." So you know they <laughs> they all make fun of me, you know, because of how old this hoodie is. Um, but it's something I wear pretty much every day, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like I knew for sure it would be crazy anyway, um, just because of you know how how our fans show up for any game. But you know, with them obviously beating Tennessee this past weekend, like I think you know this this would be a great environment. You know, it'll be an early game, but I know our fans will show up and it'll be a, you know an awesome atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely – I mean, you definitely, you know, look around the country at kind of what's going on. But um, I think my biggest thing and, you know, something that Coach Sweeney has been preaching to us um, is, you know, take care of what we can kind of control from this point on. And, you know, if we went out, um, different things like that, I like, you know, I like where we'll be at. And I think, you know, if we do win out, I think things will take care of itself. So just trying to stay focused um, and finish these last two games of the season strong. Um. Uh, what do you what do you mean by that? Like it's hard to watch other teams how they're, oh. if they win or lose. How they rank, how you guys rank I mean, them? I definitely have. Uh, I've been peeking around the country, kind of seeing what's going on, and um, not. But I haven't been getting too caught up in it because I know, like, um, like it's college football. Anything can happen. I know, like, um, we kind of dug ourselves in a hole with that loss at Notre Dame, but um, 
you know, I, like I said, I like our chances if we went out. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, I like our odds. Yeah, um, I mean, it'll, it'll definitely be fun. Um, just guys you're around all the time, guys you're super close with. So that'll be fun. Um, luckily, I am, you know, f from Spartanburg an hour away, so I'll get to go home and spend a little bit of time with my family and things like that before um, come before Friday. So, um, you know, it'll be fun to obviously spend some time, you know, with the guys here, but also go see my family a little bit. What's Jordan McFadden thinking about Thanksgiving at home? Oh, I mean, of course, all types of food. Um, like, Thanksgiving's always a tough part for me because I know I have a game on Saturday, but also being an offensive lineman, I want to eat as much food as possible. So it's kind of it's kind of tough keeping a balance between, you know, eating whatever I want and realizing, you know, you got to go play on Saturday. What's the camp best food? Um, um, for me, it's my mom's macaroni. Like, that's something that I have to have for Thanksgiving. Questions for Jordan from Zoom? Yeah, Jordan, this is Chapel with the State. Um, I know South Carolina has a few big recruits along the defensive line specifically. Um, what have you seen out of that group in preparing for them? Yeah, I mean, they're long, like Jordan Branch. He's a you know tall, long guy. Um, he's quick. Uh, so, you know, Zach Pickens is a big, strong dude as well. Um, both, you know, highly recruited guys and both, you know, great players. Um, so, you know, like I was kind of saying earlier, we got to have a plan for those, for those guys across the D-line um, and try to slow them down as much as we can. Um, but, it, I mean, it's definitely going to be a challenge for sure. Like they, um, you know, they're grown men. They, they, they prepare and they know how to play ball um, as well. So, you know, we definitely got to have a plan and be ready for a challenge on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, they, those two together, uh, they're different for sure. Like, they, like, they'll butt heads. Like, those two, Will Putnam and, and Walker Parks will argue all the time. Like, they, they live together, they argue all the time, um, but they also kind of complete each other. Like, they're both equally crazy. So, you know, they, they kind of even each other out. Um, but, nah, like, being with those guys, is always fun. Like you always, you always be laughing if you're with those two for sure. I guess what's the most random argument? You know? Um, I don't remember what exactly they were arguing about during like fall camp or maybe spring, but I don't, I don't have no clue the arguments out. But they were literally yelling at each other in the middle of the field. Uh, I have no idea what it's about. And I look at both of them. I'm like, bro, just shut up. Like, <laughs> they were literally yelling in the middle of the field. Um, I had no clue what it was about. But it was just after the fact. It was kind of funny. So yeah.